Hello, Bangkok. Hello, Bangkok. Say you are the place, Bangkok. Hello, <laughs> Today it is possible for people to communicate with one another almost anywhere on earth. Worldwide communication is helping to make a better world by and understanding. The air is filled with messages and images, ideas and information, transcending all the old barriers that used to separate people from one another. The fact that worldwide communication is a reality today is due in no small measure to the dream of one man, Alexander Graham Bell. Bell had many dreams. Like a handful of visionaries, he thought that man might actually fly. Getting off the ground at first took the form of huge kites. The biggest of all, called Signet, was towed to sea for a good breeze and actually carried a man aloft. Then came the Bell Plains, which took to the air a few years after the Wright brothers. Sometimes the ideas began as models, like this little hydrofoil boat. The big boat that resulted clocked over 70 miles an hour way back in 1919. Not bad for a dreamer. But Bell's greatest invention, dated 1876, was the telephone. Pondering the revolution in communication that he and others had started, Bell foresaw a day when it would be worldwide, reaching beyond the geographical barriers that separated people. And he felt that when that day came, Communications would help to bring about a better understanding among people everywhere. The day is here, but what of Bell's dream? What is the value of communications to the people of the world? That value has been long in the making. Long before man, the air was filled with sounds. The sounds of communicating birds and reptiles, animals and insects. There were sounds for calling and coaching the young, and serenades for mating time. To these earthly inhabitants, the ability to communicate was a matter of life and death. Our remotest ancestors undoubtedly talked to one another with sounds inherited from an animal world. But gradually a wonderful new dimension was added, a dimension of thought and ideas and memory, and a desire to express things, who we are and what we did. Human communication became something unique, making possible society and civilization. And what a thing that was.
Look at it here at Angkor, a monument to Buddhism in the jungle of Cambodia. Angkor is dead. The people are gone. The temples deserted. But it is not mute. The stones the people of Angkor carved still speak across the centuries, communicating an idea of who they were and how they lived. Faces in the jungle, part of a priceless human heritage. A city in the clouds, another part of that heritage. This is Machu Picchu in the Andes of Peru, the sacred city of the ancient Incas. No more impregnable fortress was ever conceived. So carefully fitted were the stones of Machu Picchu that they stand intact today as they stood centuries ago. More than anything else, Machu Picchu was a symbol of man's ability to overcome a forbidding environment, an ability that has been communicated from age to age down through the centuries. pyramids in the desert, and in the tombs beneath them, the treasures of 4,000 years of Egyptian civilization. Egypt's greatest treasure was a collection of expressive symbols and pictures, the language of hieroglyphics. For here, writing flowered, an enduring contribution to human communication. In the tombs of the pharaohs, the images abound. It was as though by telling the whole story of life, life itself could somehow be preserved. The story they told formed an enduring chronicle of this remarkable civilization, even though centuries ago its last days ended. But, even as Egypt was fading, a new day was coming to a tiny piece of land across the Mediterranean, Greece, the Acropolis at Athens, the enduring monuments of Pericles. How much there was to commemorate, here where the human mind was set free from the age-old shackles of tyranny and superstition, the names that unbound it, Socrates and Aristotle, Plato and Aeschylus, and more. The very stones seem to echo with their thoughts. For the many, of whom each individual is but an ordinary person, are still better judges than a single man. The difficulty, my friends, is not to avoid death, but to avoid unrighteousness, for that runs faster than death. Athens was and is an idea a heritage of mind even more than marble. After Athens, man was free, free for pilgrimages of the human mind that would seek out new meanings for life and new forms to communicate those meanings. One of these meanings is expressed in the cathedral at Chartres every part a mirror of medieval life. And above the parts, one idea stands out, an idea of love and devotion. Inside the cathedral, the idea continues in the most beautiful stained glass the world has ever seen. The windows 
volumes of Schott are virtually one magnificently illustrated Bible, adding a new dimension of color and elegance to human communication. To express these things, the people of the village of Schott labored devotedly to erect the majestic spires that rise beyond a wheat field in France. Everywhere in the world, here in Guatemala, for instance, stand monuments that testify to the abiding desire of human beings to communicate. In the past, this meant Inca to Inca, or Greek to Greek. But now, communication is worldwide. Thus, as people probe the past, deciphering its language and its meaning, all the knowledge and wisdom of previous civilizations can become available to everyone. Now that communications envelop the earth, the vast knowledge of the present can also belong to all men. It can, but it doesn't yet, as a look around the world reveals. Nearly every traditional setting today bears the imprint of modern technology. Our world is a world of contrasts, the old and the new. The symbols of a new world are everywhere, from New York to Hong Kong. This is no longer a civilization of just this valley or these plains. It has a new dimension. The Industrial Revolution has flowered, giving the world a potential that completely overshadows the power of all the laborers of Pharaoh. Such power is something quite new in the history of civilizations. Discoveries by scientists everywhere are changing our civilization almost daily. Because of science, it is now literally possible to make the ancient desert bloom so that every human being on Earth can have a decent life. This is quite possibly the most important fact and the most important problem of our time. For now, people everywhere know this even though it may not have come to pass in their village yet. Because of science, it is today possible to explore the sunless depths of the sea. possible to probe the far reaches of outer space. New discoveries in communication occur continually by scientists like those at the Bell Telephone Laboratories who developed the transistor, the solar battery, and the laser. Giant antennas gather in faint signals from the air and in so doing link countries and continents together. These lines of communication extend across the barren top of the world and even to satellites circling invisibly in space. They also stretch across the unexplored bottom of the sea as the Bell Systems cable ship lays new telephone cables to link continent with continent. At the same time, in many parts of the world, the traditional forms of communication still prevail.
أشهد أن لا إله of working, winnowing wheat, or building an adobe house with a technique that dates back into an unremembered past. In an era of almost limitless power resources, the human back still furnishes power in many places. At the end of the line, we also find colorful traditions that have endured for centuries. But at the end of the line, in all too many places, this is what you find. People who know there is a better life, but who live in a stagnant world. On the Altiplano in Bolivia, a farmer struggles with a back-breaking plow that hasn't been improved in centuries. He is a prisoner of primitive methods. He can never look up. He hasn't got the time, if he is to survive. Even the llamas that graze nearby eke out a better life on this land. But there are changes in the wind changes that modern communication is bringing about. The farmer may never hear of them, but his children will. Because there may be a tall tower nearby, like this broadcasting tower of the Mary Knoll School of the Air. Buenas tardes, alumnos. Hoy vamos a comenzar nuestra clase con el cartel número 6. Todos pongan mucha atención. Vamos a leer la fila número 1. Las llamas. Las llamas. There are precious few schools here on the Altiplano, but with a radio station and transistor radios, you can set up a school anywhere. la siguiente fila, o sea, la número 2. Estas llamas son Ahora van a escribir esa frase. Usted va a auxiliar, escribe en la pizarra. Estas llamas. Anywhere in the world, people will make tremendous sacrifices for an education. They know it is the first step to a better life for themselves and their country. In the Bible land, in the Bible land, where Joseph had lived, where Joseph had lived as a boy, as a boy, Nearly everyone Educational television is another means of communicating. 
So is a boat with a loud speaker, like the SS Pickering, which pushes its way up the river out of Bangkok, visiting villages in the back country. The Pickering announces its wares, which includes still another communication device, an educational film that will explain to farmers that if their sons go to school and learn to read, they can then study better farming methods. Person to person communicating is still pretty hard to beat. And all over the world, people are learning to talk to one another and to teach one another in one way or another. Tell him it's very important that he sprays the undersides of the leaves too, like this. You will listen to pronunciation practice lesson one. First, listen to the sentence, then repeat exactly as the recorder says it after him. Ready? Pronunciation practice, lesson one. Are you ready? She lost her ball in the boat. 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 He loaned his coat to an author. 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 The tall student told the old officer. 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 This is the end of lesson one. The lines of communication reach out, but not to everyone, not nearly everyone, not yet, for the job is by no means done. Out here, there is only the silence and the prisoners of the silence. But the whole world is opening up now, and communications are bringing the means to bridge the silence. Today, even in the distant places, life is changing because of the radio, the telephone, books, newspapers, and people. <laughs> In a village in India, a nurse combats blindness, which is tragically common in tropical countries. All it takes is someone. And around the world, the someones are increasing. Knee deep in the mud flats of Thailand, people struggle to raise a telephone pole so that for the first time in its history, the country will be linked together. Trainees learn to splice the cables, and back in Bangkok, engineers learn to run the system. This is the RF equipment and the test equipment that we'll be covering for the next four weeks in the classroom. We must have a standby supply to that which will provide power keep the telephone system operating. A set of towers like these can mean everything to a country, bringing farm programs and literacy programs to people in the far reaches. And so, communities move forward. And as they do, they find themselves in a world of communicating neighbors. This is the Voice of America. From Washington, we bring you a program of news, features, and comments. Here is the news. 
Radio Habana Cuba presenta Voces de la Revolución. This is the British Broadcasting Corporation. Here is the news read by Peter Kirby. In this building, people communicate in all the languages of mankind. Evidence of the hope that we may gradually resolve conflicting aspirations. This is the United Nations calling the peoples of the world. Today, the air is increasingly full of voices and images. Because of modern communications, we can indeed reach out to one another beyond the ancient barriers and in so doing understand one another a little better. Mr. Randolph? All right. I'm ready. Going to Tokyo. Each year the lines of communication stretch further under the sea, through the air, far into space, around the world. Through its contributions to this continuously expanding network of communications, the Bell system is helping to assure that Alexander Graham Bell's dream will be fulfilled. But there is still a challenge. In the distant places, in the silent places, people wait. The challenge today is to communicate to them the skills and the knowledge they need so that the wonderful heritage of the planet Earth is possessed by all of its people. Mm -hmm. 